Rachel Gonzalez knows her family looks typical, but here in Texas, she says they are a target. Every day is a fight to keep her kids safe, specifically nine-year-old daughter Libby, who is transgender. We needed to be able to create a sanctuary where all of our children feel safe and loved no matter what because we can't control what happens outside of our house. Rachel has reason to worry. Her close friend Ann Georgilis is at the center of a national firestorm surrounding her transgender daughter, who we are not identifying. A custody battle which has gone from private family court to global headline. The central issue, how young is too young for a child to transition? Ann Georgilis and Jeffrey Younger split up in 2015 with shared custody of their twins. But trouble started when one of the kids began identifying as a girl. Georgilis allowed it. She was explicitly asking for their father to affirm her as a girl by allowing her to wear girls clothes and use the name and pronouns that she uses. And uh, he refused to do that. Younger got upset and filed for sole custody. I'm not trying to cross dress my son and mislead him into thinking that he's a girl. And I'm not pushing my son towards medical transition. He started a website and gave interviews about the custody battle, like on the conservative website LifeSite. This is my son's life, and I'm not backing down. And I was not surprised at all that Americans stood up for my son. But a jury decided 11 to 1 that he should not have full custody. Georgilis should. Judge Kim Cooks imposed a gag order on both parents, then overturned the verdict, instead ruling the former couple should share custody. How often are you in touch with Anne? Mm, well, right now, multiple times a day. What's her state of mind right now? She is exhausted. It's really hard to be, uh, I mean, she receives at least 10 phone calls an hour. She gets incessant text messages of people just sending her messages of hate. And that to her personal phone. Yes, personal phone. That disapproval extending to some of the highest ranking officials in Texas and beyond. Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky tweeted, we don't let kids drink alcohol till 21. People want to move the smoking age to 21, but we will allow a seven year old to have his life and body altered like this this is child abuse. The president's son, Donald Trump Jr., weighed in, agreeing, quote, this is child abuse. People need to start to stand against this BS. Enough is enough. But it was Texas Senator Ted Cruz's tweet that angered transgender advocates. Quote, this is horrifying and tragic for a parent to subject such a young child to life-altering hormone blockers to medically transition their sex is nothing less than child abuse. Which child. is a bold-faced lie, and these politicians <sighs> absolutely know that no prepubescent child is going through any kind of medical transition. There is no such thing as surgery or hormone uh, replacement therapy for prepubescent children. That just doesn't exist. It's really hard to understand and to hear the senator of Texas call us child abusers. Dr. Mary Romano of Vanderbilt Children's Hospital says a grade school child would undergo what's called a social transition. A medical transition comes later and only if they choose. For younger kids who are nowhere close to starting puberty, the transition will be purely social. And that may be that the child chooses to dress differently, the child chooses different names or different pronouns, and really all that's happening at that age is a social transition. Rachel says the misinformation has led to threats against Ann Georgilis, who's a local pediatrician. They put a dead animal in front of the doors of her pediatric practice. A dead and, animal in front of mm -hmm. the doors of her place of business. Mm -hmm. And then last week. Someone had thrown a rock through her window while her children were there at asleep home. at home. It's been really, really difficult to watch. And it's been really hard for Libby to watch her friends go through this and not be able to live the life that she needs to live. How do you feel about what she's going through right now? Um, I think it might be very hard for her. That's Libby, Rachel's nine-year-old daughter. Even she gets that her friend doesn't have support from both parents. And when you guys hang out, what's it like? It's really fun. And yeah. easy? Yes. Do you guys laugh a lot? Yes. You do? <laughs> yes. What do you laugh about? Kitty's doing the dab. <laughs> <laughs> there is something really nice I think for them to be able to be friends and to have another friend that's like you. Libby doesn't have a lot of friends in her age range um, here in Texas that identify as transgender. Went under another name, created a whole new game. But there are other kids, like 11 year old Max Briggle. Max's family has been at the forefront of the battle for transgender rights here in Texas. 
you want to tell them what you said? His mom, Amber, says it began during the fight over one of those so-called bathroom bills. I had finally realized that Max had been holding his bladder all day at school. And that, for me, was an aha moment. And I sat him down, and I was like, baby, like, are you using the potty at school? And he's like, no. I was like, why not? And this, the honest truth was that he felt more comfortable going in the boys' room. But he'd go in the boys' room, and people who knew him as a girl would send him to the girls' room. I'd actually like to invite Dan At one point in 2016, Amber invited conservative Republican State Attorney General Ken Paxton to dinner. Here's an opportunity. Come have dinner with us. When you get to know someone on a personal level, it's hard to hate up close. That's, you know? that's the key. Yeah. It's hard to hate yeah. up close. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to hate up close. They were here for like two, almost two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. They were like, hey, as long as we got you, this is really important. Next time a piece of legislation comes across your desk. Just remember us. Mm -hmm. Remember Max. Mm -hmm. You know, keep that face in your mind. Mm -hmm. And that's why we feel so betrayed. Yeah. You he, know. He said he would. Yeah. He said he'd remember. What is that one? Amber says she thought he understood their position. But in October, Paxton's office released a letter saying the children at the center of this dispute are in immediate and irrevocable danger. We reached out to Paxton's office. The response, I trust that DFPS will act immediately upon our request, conduct a thorough investigation, and protect this child. After meeting a mother like me, and meeting me in my home, meeting my child, breaking bread at my table, engaging with my children, and then acting like families like mine should not exist, it's infuriating. Pressure from local officials is not letting up. GOP lawmakers in three states, Georgia, Kentucky, and now Texas, are proposing legislation banning trans-related health care like puberty blockers or hormone treatment to anyone under the age of 18. In some cases, it would become a felony. You can't say that, you know, we're going to remove your necessary treatment as a policy matter and hope you survive the next five years. I mean, that is just, you know, gambling with, with, with people's lives. Chase Strangio works on transgender justice for the ACLU and in recent years has become a visible advocate. That is essentially the state coming in and saying what we want is for transgender children to die because they, they, they are disregarding all of the evidence that says a child needs to be affirmed and saying we are going to block that affirmation in every way that we can. Texas Republican Matt Kraus tweeted about proposing a similar bill there. Seven years old is probably a little too young to be able to make these decisions. I do think there is some concern with uh, making these uh, maybe life-changing decisions at an early age uh, before these children fully understand the consequences and the ramifications of their decisions. Dr. Romano says it's important for legislators to understand that some medications are not permanent. If they enter, start to enter puberty and they have that distress, they may get a medication that is called a puberty blocker. That medication is reversible and really all it is is a pause button. So it pauses puberty. I always want to be well informed on any piece of policy that I propose or legislation that I put out there. So absolutely, we want to see any and all statistics and, and evidence out there. As lawmakers keep debating, the custody battle rages on. And Georgia List filed two new motions this week, one requesting Judge Cooks be removed from the case, the second asking to reinstate the jury's verdict, giving sole custody back to her. There were some media sources that decided to share that she had gone to school in boys' clothes and was fine, but that was not true. She immediately changed into girls' clothes as soon as she had the option at school. The Gonzalez and Briegel families say this issue has far-reaching consequences. Listen to your child and affirm them. It's not your life to live, it's your child's life to live. We felt like we had an obligation to stand up for the community. Just, you know, follow your heart and follow your child's lead and, you know, just live a life of love and, you know, it's, it, it's the easiest thing in the world. For Nightline, Gloria Riviera, ABC News, Dallas, Texas. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.